Hello, I'm Jamila Mosaiva, an international social etiquette consultant. So without further ado, let's get started. Today's video is etiquette lessons from Princess Diaries number one. So she takes a look at Mia and notices that her nails are not clean and she has glitter on them. And her grandmother says that they have to be clean, so they should not have any glitter on it. Again, I think the most important moment in this is that your nails should be clean regardless of what their length is whatever they look like for royalty yes uh, certain nail polish are better deemed like the monotone colors so no glitter or heavy design but if that suits your personality and who you are and what you do i think today in a modern day world you can have it but just make sure that your nails are proper they're not chipped the nail polish is coherent, everything is clean and proper. So her grandmother shows Mia how Mia is walking. She says no slouching, make sure that your shoulders are rolled backward, that they are straight, that your chin is parallel to the ground, that you hold yourself straight. I've actually done an entire video about that, that I don't want to get into details in this video because we have a lot more to cover. If you haven't checked it out, make sure that you do. I'll put some clips on both sides here so you can check it out on YouTube. In this episode, I want you to pay attention at the table setting. Can you count how many courses they will have? So here in this image, we see that Mia looks at the table setting and she is just surprised at how many utensils there are on the table. And if you guessed the right amount, then congratulations, you're an etiquette expert. If not, then let's learn together. So if we look at the table, we see that there are four utensils on the right hand side. We know that we're going to have four course meal. There's nothing about the plate, so we don't see if there's going to be dessert or if the dessert utensils will be brought in together with dessert. We just see what's for the, for the meal. And then we see four utensils, we see two kinds of spoons and two knives. And then for the knives, we have two pairs of work. The two spoons do not have any you pairing utensil on the other side. If they did, they would be something directly in the same position on the left hand side. So we start always from the outwards and always from the right hand side. We start with the spoon. The oval spoon is usually for creamier uh, textured soups. So we're expecting something like that. Then we have an oval shaped spoon. That's something for a broth, maybe a soup with some kind of, you know, minced meat in it or some spaghetti or little uh, kind of pasta in it. Then we have perhaps a fish knife and then we have the, you know, main course knife and fork. But from my, what I see, I see that then a salad is served. There must be a mistake in this episode because if we start from outwards and if we start from the right hand side, then the first meal should be a soup. They have brought in a salad, but they didn't bring any utensils with it. So this is an episode that there was a mistake in terms of how the things were placed. Interestingly, before learning about etiquette, before becoming an etiquette consultant, I always wondered why the world is waved differently than us, the public. And I thought about it, is it just a gesture? Is it just one person waving like that? And then in this movie, actually, when I was re-watching it, I realized that a lot of the rules are coming not necessarily from a, you know, I want to be different kind of standpoint of view, but from the functionality standpoint of view. The royals usually wave a lot throughout the day, multiple times a day for a duration of time. So if you continuously wave like this, you will get, your wrist will get tired, your hand will get tired. But waving in this much gentler motion, almost like, um, I don't know, doing a little dance with your hand is less exhausting. Your wrist is not so strained. So it has a functional purpose to the royal wave. In this episode, we see that Mia is eating grapes with her fingers and her grandmother is gesturing that you have to use a fork and knife. In all former occasions, you should not eat grapes with fork and knife for reasons that you see what happens to the grape when she's trying to get it with fork and knife. What you do is, if you're served a little bit a bunch, you'll just tear it with your fingers and put one into your mouth like Mia was doing. But the soft cheese that we see there on the plate and the sorbet, you would eat it with fork and knife. If the cheese is soft, you'll just use the fork. If it's a harder one, you'll use fork and knife. 
What you wouldn't do, however, if grapes are served in a food bowl in the middle for everyone to eat, you will not continuously just tear it from there. You would usually be served a scissor, so you would cut a bunch, a branch of grapes, you would place them on your plate and then eat it from there. Another mistake that's more obvious one is once she has dropped the grape, she kneels down to get it out. This is the wrong way of doing it. If you happen to drop any item from the table, please do not bend down to pick it up. Your cutlery, be it food particles, whatever it is. The only thing you're allowed to bend down to pick up is the napkin that's not on the table, that's on your lap. You can pick it up once dropped and continue using it if you're okay with that. If not, do not bend down, just ask for a replacement. In this episode, we see a crowd of guests dressed according to two different dress codes white tie and black tie. You see some men are wearing a white bow tie and others are wearing a black bow tie. Some are wearing a black cummerbund and the other ones are wearing white one. We see that Queen is wearing her tiara. She had white gloves. Her shoulders are covered. This looks like a white tie dress code. And then we see an image of Mia's mom who is wearing a strapless black dress and her friend is wearing a strapless dress. And then when Mia walks into the event, she also has a strapless dress. Her shoulders are open. So I'm not sure what kind of a dress code this event was, but if this would be a state banquet where her, you know, the announcement of her becoming a royal member of the family, I would assume this would be a white tie event, the most formal one. But for some reason, the designer of this movie, the costume designer of this movie, has mixed the two dress codes together. Again, as I said before, one dress code per event. The two dress codes, especially with the formal ones, cannot be mixed together. Today's video is perhaps one of the most favorite of all ladies out there, as well as guys, I think, because uh, my husband was actually recently telling me that he has rewatched the video as well, just on his own. And so I assume a lot of men and women around the world love watching this video and that is Devil Wears Prada. Today we'll be looking at specific etiquette, a professional image, as well as lab lessons that that movie has taught us. So in this episode we hear that Andrea asks who is Miranda? So she doesn't know who she's being interviewed by or the person that she's going to work for. We know that rule number one for all interviews is making sure that you come over prepared, which means do your research. Take the time to overdo the research. Learn about your colleagues, your, about your potential bosses, who is the CEO of the company, what is the objective, the goal of the company, the mission, the spirit of the company. The more you know about the company you're going for interview for, the better prepared you are and the more heads up you are in the game. You will show your knowledge about the company and that shows the interview that you care about this place, you care about this job. In this episode, we see that Andrea is drinking her soup while standing in line to pay for that soup. We know that number one etiquette rule is not to eat anything while standing up. If you want to eat something, make sure to take your seat even for five minutes, eat what you have and then continue walking or standing. So she is not only standing, she's actually walking in the line. So she's breaking a lot of etiquette rules. She's eating something that she hasn't yet paid for. And also because she's eating while walking, she always drips a bit of a soup on her sweater, which stains her sweater and it's a wool uh, sweater. So the stain really goes deep inside. This is something that has shown to us how unprepared she is for this world of fashion, but we often see this mistake being done by people in other professions that is far away from fashion. No matter what kind of job you do, make sure to look tidy and presentable at all times and avoid eating while standing up. Studies have shown that it only takes seven seconds to make the first impression. And it's true that in this world today as well, it's very much relevant that the books are judged by their cover and so are we humans we are judged by our outer look what we wear how we're groomed how well taken care we are so it's important to make sure that you find the kind of a style that is flattering to you that is suitable to your body type the hairstyle that suits and matches your face that you are well groomed and well prepared to take over the world it's interesting that in this series of clips that we see from this movie Nothing very radically changed about Anne. If you take a 
pay careful attention, paid careful attention to her hairstyle, it didn't change much. Nothing about her face changed drastically. Maybe she, perhaps she found the right kind of makeup that she started applying. But what truly changed is her sense of style and the things that she would start wearing were actually flattering to her body type. She didn't lose weight throughout this movie. She didn't her she didn't change much in terms of her body or general looks in total. But what truly really changed is the kind of clothing that she started wearing that was flattering to her body type. So if we were to take away an important personal branding or image lesson from this is that the most crucial thing you have to do is find the right fitting clothes for your body type. Then preceded by the right hairstyle for your face and your, your general stature, your general, um, so to speak, style and then just applying the kind of a makeup that highlights your strong parts and perhaps disguises some of your weak points. So I hope this clips serve you as a good example of how personal style can really change the way the world perceives you as well as primarily how you perceive yourself. Because really what we see here in this movie is with her change in her style and her clothing, the way that Andrea started perceiving herself also changed. She became a lot more confident, she loved the way she looked and she actually started working better once she actually suited up to conquer the world. Here we see that Nigel and Andrea are toasting to his new achievement and they're holding a champagne glass which is called the flute, the very the modern champagne glass because there are some other champagne glasses that are different in their shape. This one is called the flute and Nigel is holding it by the stem which is the correct way of holding it whereas Andrea is holding it by the bowl which is not the correct way of holding it, particularly because champagne is supposed to be served cold and when your fingertips are coming in touch with the bowl, it warms up the champagne a lot faster and the bubbles dissolve faster, hence you lose the taste of the champagne much faster. The right way of holding it and prolonging the pleasure of drinking a cold champagne is holding it by the stem like Nigel is doing. Thank you so much for watching this video until the very end. I hope you enjoyed this analysis of Devil Wears Prada. Please let me know down in the comment section below what were your favorite moments, perhaps something that I've missed in this video analysis or perhaps some of the lessons that I have highlighted in this video that you found particularly useful. I love to hear your feedback and I enjoy answering to your questions. I hope to see you in my next video. Take care. Bye.